Don't say it's incorrect. Okay. Um, so here we have uh, two identical uh, uniform solid spheres connected by um, a uniform rod. And we're given several axes. A, uh, B, C, um, D goes that direction, E is here, and F is here. And we're asked to rank Oh, sorry, D isn't there. <clears throat> that makes more sense. Uh, D is through the middle this way. And we're asked to rank the moments of inertia about each of these axes. So remember our moment of inertia is the sum over masses times distance squared for discrete objects but for continuous objects, we would use the integral. And so the, the main takeaway here is that it depends on the distance squared to the axis. And we're talking about perpendicular uh, distance here. So it'd be um, completely perpendicular. So from the d-axis, we would just go straight to the mass point. Say for the a-axis, again, we would go straight to the mass point. Um, so, whichever has the highest distance from the axis would have the highest uh, moments of inertia, and whichever has the lowest would have the lowest moments of inertia. And so if we look at our d-axis here, we can see that all the vectors that you draw would be small. And so the D axis is likely to have the lowest moment of inertia. And if we look at, say, our C axis here, you can see, although these ones are going to be small, these are going to be quite large. And because it's R squared, you want, you want the distances to be kept as small as possible. So anything with large distances is going to contribute way more than, say, for the a-axis, where you have um, the same amount of R's, but they're all half as big as for, as for C, where you'd have half of them twice as large. So that means our C-axis is going to be likely very large, and probably our largest, or it will be our largest. Um, and because it's perpendicular distance and this is a 3D object, we would expect since C goes through the center of a sphere and F, although it goes out of the page, it's also going through the center of a sphere. So if we rotated this 90 degrees, then really what we'd have is the same looking object, um, which that's supposed to be the same. The same looking object but with our f-axis going this way, our a-axis out of the page, our e-axis going this way, our b-axis out of the page, our c-axis out of the page, and our d would still be this way. Right, so in other words, f and c look to be the same, and e and a look to be the same. So these two are going to be the same. F and C are going to be the same. And so we can start to rank. So D is going to be our smallest. Um, we already said that C is going to be our highest. And F is going to be equal to it. Um, B is then going to be our next highest because it has the next highest vectors. And so A and E are then our next lowest, um, as they're both the same. So we've got A equals E. And then that's going to be less than B. 
and that's going to be less than our C, which equals F. I don't think I missed any. Nope. Okay, so our D's are lowest. A and E are then our next lowest, which bisect the the uh, fig the shape. Uh, then B is going to be our next lowest, and then C and F are our highest. Okay. So our square is our biggest factor, um, and we did it in the opposite direction, but C equals F is greater than B, um, is greater than E, is greater than D, so they missed an A, but that's okay. Um, Good. And I'm actually going to stop it there um, and say uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the One Class channel. If you want to add questions, please follow the links below the video. Uh, this has been Jeff Krause for One Class.